Alright, welcome back to my channel. So this video I'm quite nervous to post is a story time, but it's quite personal to me. Um, it is going to be involving other people. I'm not going to be mentioning any names, obviously, um, or the name of my school or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this video can help people from both sides of the story, which will make sense when I start talking about my high school experience. Um, but yeah, I just hope this can help other people so what I've learnt from my high school experience. So I've got this, I've just wrote, written down some points I want to make. Just so I, don't, I, just, I want to make sure I mention everything in this video that I wanted to talk about and not miss anything out. So yeah, I don't really know where to start. So, God, I feel really nervous, I don't know why, I just feel a bit thick. Right, so in high school, obviously there's, where I live anyway, you have five years, so it's year seven to year 11. So I started year seven in 2013, I think it was, yeah. Obviously when you start high school, it's all a bit new and you feel a bit nervous on your first day, but like you, most people tend to like the year tend to form like a big friendship group and everyone in the year is just friends well in my case this is what happened so at the start of high school pretty much the whole year was like a massive friendship group like when we went out to play out it'd be like 30 of us on school fields playing out or in the woods at a park it would be like a massive group of us um so yeah i was part of like a really big group at the start of high school Obviously, as the years go on, people break off this massive friendship group because it is big, like, it's not really a friendship group, it's just a clique, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, obviously people break off and make their own friendship groups. I stayed part of, like, a really big group, I'd say, until about year nine, which is where, like, things started to change with who I was friends with and stuff like that. So, at year nine, I sort of had a friendship group of about ten girls, I'd say. About ten girls, yeah. But because of all the breakups, breakups like friendship groups breaking off, there was a beef or like situations where people didn't like certain people and stuff like that. You know, people that go off and start smoking, you have people that go off and just, you know, friendship groups. So the people that went off and started smoking um, had an issue with me. I don't know why or what caused it. It just started. I think a lot of it, I don't want to say jealousy, but I think it was jealousy just because I think a lot of that had to do with my boyfriend that I was with at the time, but I'm still with the same guy actually, but yeah, a lot of them didn't like, I think a lot of them, a lot of them didn't like me because of, I was with this boy and um, they didn't like me because, I don't know, I can't actually think of reasons why they didn't like me, but they just didn't. I was really trying to think of why I didn't like it, but I don't know why I'm trying to think of why I didn't like it because I never did anything wrong to anyone. Like, I really didn't do anything wrong. Um, I was just a person that they didn't like. And I remember I was at high school, I was at school one day and this girl came up to me. Obviously, I'm not mentioning names. And she was like, oh, you're going out with so-and-so. My boyfriend's going out. I've always talked about it, so I'll talk about it now. He was like, oh, you're going out with your man And I was like, yeah. And I remember saying, like, oh, as if he's going out with you. And that was sort of like the first, the first thing that I just thought, the first thing that I was like, oh, well, what's wrong with me? Like, what's, actually, what's wrong with me? Because um, I never really thought that before. I ha did have some issues with my confidence in primary school. I'm not saying it started at high school, but high school sort of brought them to light a bit more and made me like a hundred times more self-conscious of how I looked and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's like the first part. Then it, they became friends with people in the year above me, which is what tends to happen. I feel like the smokers like they become friends with the older people, and they turn they didn't like me. They'd walk past me and say things. They'd call me. It'd always be about my weight. I do not know why. I I was quite skinny. Yeah, I I will insert some pictures of what I used to look like, weight wise. But they just seem to use that against me and it'd just be like, oh god, it's the stick or show up stick or 
I'd be called stick on the Snapchat um, and just stuff like that. And yeah, that's sort of how it started out. It, some of these people, I was friends with some of these people in like year seven and year eight, and then obviously year nine when like friendship groups started breaking off on this big group that we was all part of. So yeah, I just wanted to get a bit of background to that. Hopefully a lot of people can learn from this and yeah, I want to make a bit of a change in like high school and other people's high school experiences because in my opinion, like I think high school is a very toxic place to be. And I know you go there to learn, but there's just so much more to it and it can really impact you as a person. Like I feel like high school sort of shapes you for how you're going to be in your later life, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, basically, I think it was from year 9 to year 11 where it really started to get, like, stupid, I want to say. So, as I said, in year 9, I was part of a friendship group of about 10 people, 10 girls. Um, there was always, t it was always, like, two halves, but we was all friends, if you know what I mean. Like, if there was a sleepover, that person would invite that half, if that makes any sense. I think it does. So yeah, on one half of the friendship group, well, there was one friendship group, but there was such, always these like two halves. On one part of the friendship group was people I've been friends with since, or known since primary school. Like, I've known them for a long time. And on the other side, it was one girl in that friendship group. Basically, my mum was with someone at the time, for a long period of time, for about seven years, and it just cut off, sorry. Um, yeah, one of the girls in this other half was... I would say I was close to the other half, do you know where I said I was friends with since primary school? But I was friends with this other half as well. I'm just going to call them group one and group two. So group two was, was all one friendship group, but as I say, it did split in half a little bit. Um, into like two little cliques, but we used to, at dinner time and stuff like that, we used to all sit together. So friendship group two is the friendship group that I've known since like primary school, like the old friends. And then friendship group one is the friendship group that was sort of made in high school um, but one girl I knew before high school because of my mum's past relationship so this other group I was close to all of them and I was close to both of them for different reasons but in this other friendship group was basically someone who was like a sister to me like she was like a sister for me like she used to come up like nearly every weekend um, and yeah I would call I'd call her my, I'd always call her like my sister like my stepsister even though my mum and her dad weren't married or anything like that. But yeah, we got we was really close, well I thought anyway, I trusted her with everything and she confided in me a lot. Um and yeah, I don't want to go too much into that, but yeah, basically. So that's just to sort of highlight the divide and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna go into so much detail in like how everything happened, but I'm going to try to explain as best as I can. So basically, one day, I think it was at the end of year 9, going into year 10, I think it was on like, I can't pinpoint exactly when it was because it was quite a long time ago. But the reason I am sharing my high school experience is because it has shaped me as a person that I am today and shaped me as who I am, my personality, my confidence, everything like that. It's shaped it. So yeah. Basically, there was a fallout in the group chat. Do you know what? I don't even know what it was about. Even if I try and brainstorm, I think it was about something so stupid and petty. Like, obviously, when you're young, you fall out of stuff like that. What was it about? There was, like, a misunderstanding or a disagreement in the group, which I weren't really involved in, if I'm honest, actually. If I look through Snapchat now, I'll probably be able to find the chat, but I'm not going to do that because it's really not relevant. Because I know I didn't do anything wrong to either side of this friendship group. But there was a disagreement and a little fallout. Um, so yeah, I think it was about inviting someone somewhere or something like that. Or inviting two people from that group but not anyone one from that group or something like that. Uh, so yeah, there was a fallout in the group chat. Anyway, school were a few days later. Oh, we go back to school. These two groups are not talking to each other. But as I said, I'm close to both groups. I didn't like falling out of people, like, I didn't really fell out of people over anything unless it was really serious. Um, yeah, so I didn't really fall out of anyone. So at dinner times, we started to sit separately. 
this group was stacked here by the cabinet in the playground i'm going to call it and this group would sit on the stairs at the top of sports hall so my lunch times i'll try and split them so half the lunch time i spend with this group and half the lunch time i spend with that spend with that group because i wanted to be friends with everyone i didn't want them to be a fallout i did actually try and sort it but they just weren't having none of it they were both stubborn they just didn't want to be friends with each other which fair enough okay that's fine but i wanted to be friends with both of them because i was i had no reason to fall out with any of them and i classed them all as my friends later on i found out that this group used to say really horrible things about me when i was friends with them and do things behind my back that i didn't know that they did <laughs> but i didn't even know this until after high school or at the very end of high school then um, but yeah and just knowing that after high school it just makes me feel sick to my stomach because when you put so much trust in someone and then you find out they've done that it's just it was like heartbreak and i feel like friendship heartbreaks are like worse than relationship heartbreaks because they're built over a long long period of time like some friendships like one girl in this group i'd known for like nearly 10 years and just the stuff that she'd said about me or done behind my back would just oh unnecessary oh <coughs> god i'm not <coughs> they were just so unnecessary i'm not needed i've never done anything wrong to this girl like nothing wrong if anything i've been there throughout everything and yeah so later i did find this out but at the time i didn't know any of this so i was trying to be friends with both sides of the group there were also another girl in this group group two i don't know if i could yeah oh no because we got group one group one there was also another group girl in this group who sort of tried to be friends with both sides for a long time which this girl i actually am friends with now she also tried to be friends with both sides for a long time but then eventually she was like now nah, i'm just gonna be friends with these people so that's happened so she didn't really talk to us it was just she was just friends with this pe these people she wasn't really a nasty person or anything like that and i think she chose the wrong side I'm not saying they were sides, but she chose the wrong side because she wasn't like them, if that makes sense. They were just very bitchy and negative and just nasty for no reason. So, eventually they started, because I was trying to be friends with both sides, they took, I think, this is why I think they don't like me, they took that as me being sick because I was trying to play both sides and find out information from them, tell them and but that is not what I was doing, I was literally just trying to be fine with both sides. That's all I was doing, I was not doing anything like that. Which I made very clear as well, but anyway. Um, I think it's because I was quite mature at a young age, whereas they hadn't matured yet. I'm not saying I was this and they was that, but I do think that is quite a big part of why they acted the way I, they did and I acted the way I did. By mature, all I mean is they would walk past me and give me dirty looks, whereas I wouldn't. Where, like, as they're making a scene out of just because we're not friends, they have to give me a dirty look and cause an environment and an atmosphere. They would laugh at little things I'd do, like, I was quite a goofy person, so they'd laugh and make me feel like I was being stupid and be very judgmental. And they wouldn't want to fix the issue that was made out of nothing, whereas I would. So, this video is literally to address the issue because I know I've been talking about my confidence and my weight a lot, like, just mentioning it little clips in my past videos um because it just crops up a lot and when i talk about things i'm like oh yeah that's because of that or that's because that happened or this is because that was said about me so this is why i am doing this story time so i'd be in class and do you know i talked about the smokers at the start the group one sort of joined friends with the smokers um who had bullied me before i don't want to say the word bully because i don't class it as bullying because I don't, I don't want to think like oh, I got bullied but when I think about it like the definition of bullying it probably was that um, but because they, I used to be friends with these girls I, didn't, I wouldn't say they were bullying me do you know what I mean but yeah they used to say things they used to be so involved in my personal life like I mentioned about my boyfriend like we'd be off school for the East holidays which would be like a two week break and I'd be walking to school with my friends and I'd get to the gate and before I even walked through the school gates they'd come up to me and say oh your boyfriend's done this or do you know that uh, your boyfriend's been chilling with this person or just trying to get in my head and upset me there'd be other things as well that they'd say just little things like that and i'd just be like i remember one day i literally just said i was like are you joking 
but I haven't even set through the school gate and you're coming up to me telling me things that I already know if it had happened or that you're trying to stir things and it's just like why are you so bothered about who I'm involving myself with or what I'm doing in my free time like they were just so bothered and I just didn't understand why I still don't understand why but yeah so yeah once they started like falling out me group one I was just like fine whatever like if you don't friends me that's fine I'll just be with this group like I'm fine I don't need I don't need them so I'll be fine I'll, just, I'll be friends with group two um, the numbers don't mean anything by the way I was close to these people anyway um, so yeah so things started to crop up like they just start making indirect comments about me or walking past me and saying things or just looking at me and laughing as if I was like a joke or I was just like disgusting or like I was, in, like I was a clown I sort of felt like and because they were saying that because I've been friends with them before, you know the smokers that were were saying stuff about me before, they knew that affected me and they knew that that bothered me what they said. So then when they fell out with me, they thought, oh, we'll start saying what they're saying because we know that really gets to Alicia. So we're going to start doing the same thing. So that they basically just were following a crowd of people that had this hatred towards me for no reason because they were bored and probably had nothing else better to do. And I was just a victim. I was the person that they chose to pick on. Um, so when we fell out, I was really upset. I wasn't even upset that we'd fallen out. It was mainly because my sister, my the girl that I thought of, sorry, my boyfriend's playing this game. The girl that I thought of as my sister, she just turned her back on me and took their side. And I was just so, that honestly, I don't even think anyone realises how much that broke my heart. Because when you've spent a lot of time with someone and you've confided in them and you're with them all the time, like, you trust them and they do that it's just like you just doubt yourself so much and you think what have i actually done like what have i done to you to deserve this sort of thing like i want, didn't pity myself i was just so sad because she was a big part of my life for a long time so yeah that's something that i struggled to deal with at first um so yeah so it got to the point where people started saying making false rumors up about me like i'd done this i'd done that and I remember one day I got back and this girl sent me a picture. It was a picture of a girl, her face wasn't in it. And it was just a picture of her body downwards. She was laying on a bed and she was in a Calvin Klein matching set, which I didn't know, I still don't even know them Calvin Klein matching the Grand Bra set. But that's what she was wearing. I just remember the picture. And it went around everywhere. And I got home one day and I went on Snapchat. And the picture was there and there was a caption saying this is Alicia Vaughan and Kelly. And all of a sudden everyone was sharing it. And I was just like, what on earth? It's like this isn't even me for a start. And everyone's just sharing it saying it's me. I don't even know who this girl was like. Cause I, if I were that girl, I probably would have said like, look, it's not her, it's me, or I don't know, I don't know if I would have done that, but the red scribble is scribbling out people's names and also underneath my name where it says Alicia Thornton Kelly and it's all scribbled out. It says skin and bones, she's a hoe, it's Alicia Thornton Kelly, stuff like that, horrible stuff. Yeah, people were sharing it and like, oh, I recently broke up with my boyfriend who I'm with now, but obviously when you're in high school, you break up, get back together, break up, get back together, which is what happened with us. And this girl was the reason we broke up and she messaged me, I remember on Facebook, and she said, I don't even want to find it now. She said something along the lines of, nice Calvin's babe, and then sent a picture to me. And I just thought, it's not even me, like what, why have you got, like, she, this girl didn't even go to my school. And I was just like, why, like why, do you know what I mean? Like I've, I've never sent pictures, indecent pictures, to anyone, literally no one. Especially at such a young age. I was just like, what is going on, like this isn't even me for a start. Why do people want to say it's me? And it just got shared everywhere, like. And that was sort of the point where I was like, I just felt like everyone hates me. Like everyone literally hates me. And the girl was quite skinny in the picture and I think that's why everyone thought it was me as well because everyone was like, oh yeah, it's definitely Alicia. Look how skinny this girl is. I remember someone shared it and put skin and bones. And I was just like, oh my God, what have I actually done? I just was so confused at what I had done. So yeah, that's that.
it was literally just a crowd. I just felt like my whole year hated me. Like I'd go to school and even if someone just looked at me like was looking at the classroom, I'd think, oh my god, they're looking at me because they didn't like pictures of me. Like, oh my god, this is so embarrassing. Like, I'd get anxiety going to school or if it was a holiday, I was off school for a week or two. The night before I was going back to school, I'd get just such bad anxiety. I'd be like, I've got to go back and face like... It wasn't even that what they said upset me, but it was just constant, just, you don't, Alicia's this, Alicia's that, why have you done, do you know what I mean? And it was stuff I had never done, I'd never done anything wrong to any of them. And it'd just be constant pounding in my, in my ear every single day of someone saying something new. And I just couldn't be bothered, it was draining, like it was so draining, and I just, I just could not deal with it, honestly, I just could not deal with it. So yeah, it was mainly me and my group that got picked on, but another friend of mine, a little bit later on, started to get picked on for nothing as well. But it wasn't about her appearance or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I will get into that as well. But yeah, they were super involved in my personal life. Like, I'd go to a dance comp and I'd post like what I'd won on my story, because obviously I was proud of myself, but it was hard work. So I'd be like, oh, I got first in pairs, I got second in this, I got first in team. I'd say, put the post on my story, I'd be like really happy. Then I'd go on Facebook and I'd see like a video being shared of like a skinny girl dancing. And then group two would, someone had, someone out of that group would share it and tag all of them in it and put, who did this remind you of? And clearly I know it's aimed at me because they'd say stuff like that to me. They'd say, like I'm skinny, like I think I've got an R because I used to like, it sounds stupid, but I used to like twerking. Obviously, when they were friends with me, like at parties, I'd like shake my bum and stuff like that. But, like, I was young, like, even now I do it, like, that's just who I am and my personality. And they sort of shadowed my personality and sort of made me think, oh, I shouldn't be like that, maybe. Because maybe it's embarrassing. So I sort of changed how I was around people. I want is outgoing. Like, I used to be like the clown of the group. I like funny and like say jokes and make a fool of them like embarrass myself but it'd be funny and I felt like I couldn't do that anymore because I felt like well everyone's taking the mick out of me for being like that for being myself so I can't be myself anymore so yeah so I think it was at the end of year 10 I was like you know what I've literally had enough if they started saying anything to me I would speak up for myself but just because I'm speaking up for myself it doesn't mean it's not bothering me anymore like I speak up for myself but then I'd go home and I'd be so upset or I'd feel rubbish I wouldn't take pictures of myself I would not like anyone taking pictures of me or if someone took a picture of me I'd be like oh my god like I look disgusting I look awful and I wasn't aware of it at the time I don't like labelling myself I'm not labelling myself but I think I did develop body dysmorphia or body dysmorphic disorder which the definition of that is actually I can just find it the definition of that is a mental condition where you spend a lot of time worrying about your appearance and it affects your daily life. It can be called, also be caused by traumatic past experiences. That's like a vague definition of what that is. So yeah, I definitely developed that. I think I've still got that now. Like I still have elements where I'm like, oh, do my arms look too skinny in that or, you know, just stuff like that. So yeah, I got to the point where I was like, do you know what? I've literally had enough. My confidence got to the point where it was just so low. I was so upset about myself. I hated the way I looked. And the way I looked defined me as a person. Like, I thought, oh, because I'm skinny, I can't be funny. I can't be pretty. I can't be this person's best friend. Oh, I can't be that person's girlfriend. I just thought... I just got to such a low point. Like, I had suicidal thoughts. I was just really, 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 really low. Um, so yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention as well. Do you know, I said I had suicidal thoughts. I wanted to fight. I got aggressive. The stress of going back to school it caused me to be quite ill. I had a stomach condition for two months, where I was really seriously ill in hospital. Um, and another reason why I aggravated my mum so much is she went into school about it was because it was making me ill. Because for some reason, when I'm stressed, I I just get so ill, and I do not know why. Like if I'm stressed. I've got a, I have an issue with my bowels, so when I'm stressed it just like triggers it and I get really, really ill. I'd get migraines, I'm crying so much, I can't myself sleep and I wake up in the morning with a migraine, 
couldn't leave my room. I'd be in, I'd be laying in bed in darkness for two to three days sometimes, and then that affected my attendance at school. And something that I found ridiculous was school started being like, oh, your attendance is low, like you need to come to school more. But they weren't fixing the issue of why I wasn't coming to school. They weren't fixing that. All it was like, you need to come to school, but they weren't digging deeper and thinking, oh, she's not coming to school because of these people. These people are causing her stress, which is making her ill. I wasn't faking it. I won't come to school because I was, I was genuinely ill if I weren't going to school. I would not miss, I would not sky. So, yeah. Got to the point where, like, I got, started getting angry and aggressive. Like, I would, every time they said something to me, like, I know it sounds really bad, but I went to school most days and I used to think, please, one of them just hit me. Like, I actually wanted one of them to hit me so that I could hit the back. I would never start a fight. I do not promote violence at all. But because of the, the, the built-up emotion and upset, it turned into anger. And I just remember thinking, like, just hit me. Just hit me because I know if they hit me, I'm going to literally, like, I'll hit them back and I won't stop. Like, I will get all my anger out. And that's what I felt like I needed to do. But it never came to that, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah. My other friend did actually get into a fight. Well, someone beat her up. He wasn't even part of this friendship group, but they got someone bigger and scarier to fight her. Um, but after that, that just made me so mad. I got so angry. And after that, all of the girls in group two were taking the mick out of it. Like, oh, I can't believe this just happened to someone so like did you see what happened and stuff like that and I was just like she's just been beaten up for nothing she literally came over and had nothing to say and just started a fight literally and it's like they felt powerful because they had this friend do you know what I mean like oh it does make me angry but I don't even hold any grudges about it anymore so I'm I know I'm a really good person and I've moved on from that part of my life and I'm happy I'll talk about that in a minute but yeah, anyway, we were walking out of maths class and they were all talking about it. And the girl who I said was like my sister, she said something, I can't even remember what she said. And I was like, what did you just say? And we was arguing whilst in this next class. And it sounds pathetic what I'm about to say, but I literally, I literally, I saw red. And when she, she turned around, I literally went for her and my friend had to pull me back. And because I felt that aggression towards someone that I used to love so and care about so much, it upset me. Like, I got so upset that I, I honestly felt like I could have really, like, I felt like I was going to hit her. And I, that, that the thought of that actually upset me. I remember I was actually going to geography at the time. I was outside like, my class and I started shaking. And my brain was like getting heavy. And I was like, oh my God, like, I started panicking. Because I, I've never felt so angry like that before. Like, I could hurt someone. Anyway, I, I felt like I got a fit, so my friend was like, you all right, you all right? I started crying, I couldn't breathe, I was panicking, I was basically starting to have a panic attack, which I've never experienced before, before this time. So a teacher walked past and she just said, sit down. So I sat on the corridor and then they all walked past me and they were laughing. And when you're in that state of mind, you just, it's like a downward spiral, like you're just like, it's just awful. Like, I just remember the corridor was just spinning, I couldn't breathe, I was shaking, I was crying. So I got sent home that day, but that's just one time where that's the, I think that's the only time they've actually seen me react to what they've done or how they've made me feel. Apart from that, I'd get behind closed doors and they thought, I feel like if they saw how it affected me, they wouldn't even care anyway. So yeah. And I used to think like, why are they judging me on how I look? Because, or on my weight? Because they used to call me thick and I was skinny, this, this and that. But there was one girl in that group that was very skinny as well, so I didn't understand that. There was one girl that was very chubby, and I don't judge anyone on their weight, like... Do you understand what I mean, like... But none of them were perfect, none of them were perfect, none of them had... They weren't models, they didn't have perfect figures, I'm not saying all models even have perfect figures, like... But I would just never look at someone and constantly drill them and drill them and drill them because of the weight. Like, I couldn't help that I was healthy. I was never anorexic, I was never underweight, I was healthy and that was just my body type and I just couldn't accept my body type because they made me feel so disgusting to be in my own body, like I just felt awful. So anyway, I got to the point where I started to take epitamine which is basically 
supplement. I think it's actually illegal to take. I'm not sure because when I ordered it, it came and it said it was shampoo on the box, and then when I opened it, it was the epitaphin. But basically, it slows down your metabolism. Um, I had quite a fast metabolism because I was quite added dancing, I think, so I, I lost a lot of weight through that. Um, yeah, so a epitaphin slows down your metabolism. So I used to have that, it was quite expensive as well. Um, I started seeing a slight change in my weight. But then I won't gain enough weight, I wanted to gain like a lot of weight just to show like, this is what I look like with weight, like, are you happy now? Like, do you, do you like me now that I've gained weight? Which is a really bad mindset to have because you do not need to be validated by anyone to tell you that you need to look like this. You do not need someone to tell you how you need to look or what weight you should be. Because everyone's different, of course everyone's different. I started taking weight gain and sh shit and I stopped dancing because my confidence was just so low. I couldn't, I didn't want to perform anymore. Um, and then I started to gain a lot of weight. I think I'm on the depot injection for contraception. I think that also made me gain a lot of weight recently as well. So yeah, I gained quite a lot of weight. I've never been able to budge past 55 kg which is like how much I weighed. Um, I'm only in KG because that's like the only go to the doctor, so I just remember that. I didn't used to weigh myself. Um, and I never used to budge past that. And about two months ago, I was 70 kg, which is the heaviest I've ever been. And you could see it, my clothes won't fit in there. I used to be, I've gone from a size 6 to a size 10, which is quite, I think that's quite, in like a short, in like, a, in like two years, I think that's quite a big, weight gain and then I was unhappy again and I was like I'm unhappy I've just gained weight and I'm unhappy like I've just done what I thought I wanted and I'm unhappy and I started looking at pictures of myself and I was like wait of when I used to be how they, how they didn't, didn't like me and I was like I actually look nicer I like if I look at them pictures now I'm like like I had a really flat stomach, it was toned, like I really liked how my body looked at that time but at that time in the present situation I was just so unhappy I felt disgusting and I sort of came to a realisation that I was like I've changed myself because of what they said and I don't even like what I've changed into, like I do not like the way I look so I posted, I thought like I should have put, I, I felt at that time I said I need to write about this, like, I just felt like I need to write and post something to hopefully help others and just make people aware of my situation. So I'm just going to read out to you what I posted on Facebook. So this is what I shared, it's quite a long paragraph but I'm just going to read it out because it's got to explain how I was feeling that day that I wrote it. So this is what I wrote, I wrote, I wouldn't normally post something like this but feel like I should. I was looking through old pictures on my phone last night and came across this. Post your pictures. At the moment, I am the heaviest I have ever been. I'm not calling myself fat, but I am aware of the weight I have gained. Everyone knows when they are comfortable with their weight, whether that be 16 stone for them and 8 stone for others. At this time in my life, I was made to hate the way I looked, i.e. my body type, because of other opinions, if you want to call it that. And in brackets, I have never been underweight, just to clarify. Last night I realised that this is the body I am the happiest in. I was healthier and that is just my body shape. Because I listen to other people and value their opinion, I started taking supplements to slow down your metabolism to help me gain weight. I took weight gain in shapes and tried not to do cardio-based exercise in case I lost any more weight. At this point, my weight slash body shape defined me. I was mocked for it, called a stick, although I've always had shape, and made fun of. I used to come back from being at dance comps, which I used to love and feel my happiest, to see videos being shared of skinny girls twerking and people, group two, would tag each other and share, comment and share commenting we all know who this is, which was pretty obvious it was about me. I cried for hours just thinking why can't they leave me alone, why do they care how my body is, and, mentally, and then I would mentally abuse myself, constantly thinking that. I just constantly think the negative thoughts about myself, which is mental abuse. To come and realise now that I want that body back. I like that body to an extent and I'm not happy now I've gained all this weight. I agree I look better in some areas, but I shouldn't have felt I had to change myself. P 
People hated me and tried to interfere with my personal life solely down to the way my body was, question mark. I don't understand. I would never dream of drug trusting one and making their life hell because of their size. They would try and ruin my relationships, share false images of half naked girls and tell everyone it was me. For what? Because I didn't like my body, or did they? I don't even know. Even after I gained a little weight, I was still known as a skinny girl. People talk about fat shaming, but nothing really gets said about it being the other way around. I'm now trying to lose weight and get in shape more, and not for anyone else but for me. Please let us change ourselves because of others' opinions. Do it for yourself. Then I share some pictures of what I used to look like. Um, so, yeah, I shared that. And I got quite, I got a lot of support. Like, I did not expect to get any support on that. I just was posting it just for my own. I just felt like I needed to. I felt like I had to write something down and just share it. So, yeah, I posted that. And early on I mentioned that in this group there was also another girl that was sort of in between the both of the friendship groups before we properly separated and she chose the wrong side. After I posted that, she DM'd me on Instagram and this is what she wrote. She wrote, I want to apologise for ever being part of the group of girls that made me feel this way. It breaks my heart and I'm so sorry if I ever contributed to how you felt. I know I didn't share any of the stuff you mentioned, but remember for being tagged in it, and I always felt it was an awful thing to do, but was too scared to speak up for what I thought was, for what I thought was them all in high school. It honestly was a disease. I hope you get to your happy place with your weight. You're beautiful no matter what your weight, no matter your weight. So yeah, she messaged me that, and obviously I'm friends with this girl now, but I think me writing that made her realise that it did affect me, and it still affects me to this day. Even though it's made me grow and I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Like it really did affect me and it's it's sad that my high school experience was so negative. Because I know some people loved high school and I do have positive memories from high school. It wasn't all bad. But I do think high school is a very toxic environment the majority of the time. Especially when the teachers aren't doing anything about it and you just feel like, well... <laughs> like my mum went into school with the indecent pictures that were being shared with girls saying it was me and... Some of the things that shared about me and they just did nothing they just they were rubbish and i just felt like they thought i was lying and they believed the pictures were me i just felt well there's no point because i'm not even going to believe it so yeah i know that this what i went through affects people it's, it's affect, it, i feel like it always affected people and i want the people that are doing the name call and whatever you want to call it to learn that that really can affect someone's mind state, mental stability, like I know I've any suicidal thoughts, some person might be pushed to the edge and actually might do something really bad to themselves and would you want to cause that? And for the people that are going through it, it really, like I can relate and I want you to know that it does get better, like you do not need them to validate that you're enough just because of the weight you are or just because of their opinion like if you had a negative opinion about someone do you have to tell them do you have to comment on someone's photo no like it's like trolling totally nowadays it's like that but it was like that in person and something that has inspired me to make this video is because of my sister it upsets me because my little sister is sort of going through this now it's not her friends that are bullying her but it's just little comments from boys saying she's this and that because they probably fancy her and they're saying that she's fat or that she's this and that and they've really knocked her confidence like my sister used to be so confident bubbly cheeky like there's just she still has this amazing personality but you can see it's knocked her a bit and she's so innocent and kind and she won't she won't say a bad word to anyone honestly and the fact that she feels like this now is so upsetting and frustrating like it makes me so mad because i'm just like I don't want to see my sister go through the same thing I did. But I think my sister has definitely developed body dysmorphia, what I was talking about. Every day she'll wear outfits. And I'm quite a tough love person, like, so I try and be like, oh god, shut up about this and that. But it's because I care and I'm trying to just knock it out of her. I don't know how else it'd be because it, it angers me because I understand how she feels. And I, but yeah, she'll get dressed and be like, oh, but my arms look fat in this or this and that. And it's crazy because unless you've experienced it yourself, 
When people say stuff so much, you start to internalise it and you believe it about yourself and you truly believe that you are what they say, like whatever they say you are and you believe it and it's really, really messes with your confidence, like it changes your personality. Like my, and something that upsets me as well, like even if we're taking a family photo at a christening or something like that, she will not want to get in it. It's like when we're older, she's not going to be in a lot of pictures because she was so low in confidence at that time of her life and it's just, it just really bothers me and upsets me because like kids can be so nasty without realising and I hope the girls now that made me feel like I used to feel realise what they did was wrong like I don't think they've ever properly apologised, I think they have a little bit, a few of them but that's never going to change how I felt, you know, like, it just, yeah. I also know that people, people from the same school that I went to watching this, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about, because everyone knew what people used to say about me. And when I posted that um, post, a few people messaged me, like, private, even private DM, or actually comment on my post, and they was like, wow, I can't believe you've shared this, like, and yeah, and when I first posted my YouTube channel, which is why I want to share this now, people were saying like, I can't believe how much you've grown, like, someone who went to my dancing, Shalana, she comes and she's just so supportive, bless her, like, um, they're just the best friends, aren't they? Like, you don't have to see them all the time, but you know you're there for each other when you need to be. Um, and she just shared my YouTube channel, she basically just put something like, she's so proud of me, like, I've shared that I've had the confidence to do with like she said I used to have no confidence which is so true like I just had no confidence I would never put myself out there now and the fact that I can do this now shows that you can grow out of it or you can learn from something like that even though it was an awful thing that I went through and it was mentally and physically draining I'm a better person now I'm 110% times 110 times more confident now than I've ever been and, that's, and you know what another thing people like people confuse confidence with like loving you like I love myself I'm this and that I would never I never think that I don't think I'm amazing but I, I accept myself and accepting yourself is one of the biggest things you can do because I know people that live their whole life and do not accept themselves they hate themselves the whole life and they're unhappy because I've accepted myself my confidence has grown with that but I'm happy, I'm happy within myself, I don't judge myself as harshly, yeah I do still ask for people's opinions and care what people say, but I've still grown so much more and yeah, I think that's something that's good that's come out of it. Also, I am not bad mouthing the people that make me feel this way, because at the end of the day, people change and people grow, um, so yeah, I just want to just put that out there as well. No. What? Why is it blurry? What? Why is it blurry? Let me see. So yeah, I'm not bad mouthing anyone, but I do understand people change. This video is mainly to help others, to help people understand that it's wrong to do that, and also to help people that are going through the same thing. Just, I know it's easier said than done, but just please try not to let people's opinions or negative comments about you do not internalise and actually think that about yourself, because it's just a downward spiral. Like, as soon as you start valuing other people's opinions, it's just not good. <laughs> I see a long term effect of what happened, like my high school experience, would be that I'm very distant with friends now, I've noticed. Like, when I started college, I was so scared to make new friends, and I was, I don't speak to people unless I'm spoken to in an environment that's new to me because. I still feel like if I say something or I just don't want them to judge me, I, d I am still scared of being judged even though I, I've grown and I'm confident, yet yeah, making friends is a really hard thing for me to do now. So at college I had my friends that I went to college with, that from my high school, from group 2, group 1, group 2, yeah. Um, but then they like made like friends and it was like a big friendship group again in college and it was a massive friendship group at college and straight away I distanced myself because I was just like I just don't like it 
it was getting bitchy, people were talking about people and people were telling me things about people they'd just been sat with and I was just like, oh, like I just don't want to be involved, like, do you know what I mean, like I just could not deal with that. So then I found a smaller group of friends in college, um, I say really, I really have like two, three friends that I still talk to at college and I say I talk to, I hardly even, it sounds awful, but I don't really go out with my friends like a lot like i don't go to town and stuff like that and we do message but i don't message them like every day like i know some friends message every day and i do really think that's because i have such bad trust issues with friends it's unbelievable like, i do not trust a lot of friends like, i'm friendly with people like i said in my past videos like, i'll say hi and i'll know i say i know them but i would not class them as my friend um so yeah but honestly, the moment you start comparing yourself to others and stop valuing other people's opinions, your life, your mindset, everything changes. Because do you really want to live, live your life doubting yourself and feeling like shit? No, you don't. One thing I do regret is after high school, basically, it was New Year's Eve was when I was at a party, I got a bit drunk and they were there. And it was like getting to like the like really late and everyone were really drunk and I, remember, I know I went up to them and I was just talking to them and being really nice to them and saying like forget about it and like I don't hold grudges but I will never forgive if that makes sense like I do not hold anything against them but I won't forgive them for what they did and because I was drunk I was just being really nice and friendly when I just wish I just I didn't need to be like that like I didn't need to make up for what they did wrong to me it should have been them um, so yeah, I really regret doing that. And now I'm able to post videos and put myself out there because of how my confidence changed. Um, I want to make videos that can help people, hopefully. I do have a lot more story times. Of, I have a few deep story times. Um, and some of the stuff I'm like going to talk about is I haven't said to anyone or shared with anyone. But I just feel like it's easier to talk to a camera than it is to a person. So yeah, I'm going to see what else I've written down. You really need to love yourself for just being you. Like, just do not try and do not change for anyone. Like, it's just the worst thing you can do because you get yourself into such a rut. It's just a cycle of negativity. And I'm so glad I got out of that. I don't even know how I did it. It's just, I just woke up one day and I was like, I don't need a big group of friends. Like, I, think, I feel like as well, people always think they need loads of friends and to be really popular. And I just learnt like, I don't need to do this to impress them, like, be you and then whoever you attract and who's on your vibration, on your level, will come to you and you'll, do you know what I mean? And if you don't try and impress people, you just be yourself, you're going to meet people that are like you for you and not this person you're trying to be. But yeah, I just felt so unaccepted, like I just felt unaccepted and no one could accept me for who I were. And that's just how I felt and it was just awful. Um, but yeah, I just think you shouldn't let anyone get you down. And if you do feel that way now, like you will not feel like that forever. You'll learn, you'll come out of it. Because you need to, you should, you need to get the power back and not let them influence the decisions you make, influence anything you might want to do to yourself, influence your mindset, influence your confidence. You should not let anyone else do that. Um, and yeah, you really need to just get in, like, spend some time with yourself and talk yourself out of it, read books, do things that make you happy and don't let, try your best not to let other people's opinions affect you because I know it's easier said than done. I think I've said everything I need to say pretty much. Um, but yeah, I am in a happy place now with my way, as I said. Um, I hope if the girls I'm talking about do watch this video then I don't want them to feel bad, I just want them to understand and they probably change a lot now, I, do, I won't say I know them now because people change, people mature and realise mistakes, everyone makes mistakes in life but I just want anyone that does feel like that or is going through that to just try and take the power back, spend some time with yourself, don't listen to them, don't think you need anyone or anyone's opinion to validate how you feel about yourself or your confidence also feel like I've changed my mindset as soon as you change your mindset 
the way you see the world is so much different way you care about so much less and care about the more important things such as yourself I, I just hope that people don't have a bad high school experience because it's supposed to be a good experience because it's meant to be one of the best times of your life when you're young yeah i hope this video helps some people out or it was interesting to learn something new about me um thank you for watching if you've got this far please like share and subscribe and i'll be back next sunday with my next video Bye.